I have a little confession to make. I've never played Portal before. Until recently. You know those moments where you hear about something good, but never really had the thought to actually give it a go? Yeah, that's what happened. I've occasionally heard of the Portal video game series before from multiple videos and memes, but the thought of actually playing it never really hit me. Then quarantine happened and since I didn't really have anything to do, I went on a little journey and developed an interest in playing some of Valve's most beloved games, Team Fortress 2, CSGO, and Half-Life, although I still haven't finished the second one yet. But then, one glorious day occurred as Jesus planted a little thought into my brain that reminded me of a very familiar game, Portal. I checked the Steam page, heard how wonderful the game is, thought for a few seconds, and then decided, eh, why not? So I bought the Portal bundle, played the first Portal game, beat it, then repeated the same process with the second Portal game, and after finishing both games, I've had the same reaction as everyone else. What the fuck? Why didn't I play this sooner? There's really no doubt about it, the two Portal games are one of, if not the best 3D puzzle games ever made. Out of all the other beloved Valve video games, in my opinion, Portal takes the top spot. And if there's one Valve video game franchise that deserves to be the first to ever count to three, it's Portal. Although it's very unlikely considering the ending in Portal 2, at least there's community builds in Portal 2 to keep you occupied. Now, the other first-person shooter games like Team Fortress 2 and Half-Life are fun for the sake of shooting people, but they don't feel all fun. It seems as if there's some things that are a bit unfair. Enemies, maps, guns, and that one fucking spy that keeps stabbing me in the back. But Portal? Portal is a lot different. It's a first-person shooter game that's fun for the sake of solving puzzles. Puzzles have existed in almost any kind of game, whether it just happens occasionally in a different type of game, in a real puzzle game, or even in those types of games that make you go, where the fuck am I supposed to go? Unlike the other two games I've mentioned before, Portal is very balanced to the point where no matter how difficult the puzzles are or how many times I keep dying, it still feels great to play. At this point, you can tell I've grown attached to the video game series. So out of curiosity, I've decided to look into the Portal series and find out why the puzzles are great and why the game is overall enjoyable. Now let's go way back in time, all the way to the very first Portal game. In fact, let's go back before the game was ever released. And imagine this situation. It's the year 2007. <laughs> The year is 2007. It's a nice chill summer night. You're all snuggled up with Mr. Teddy Bear and your big boy boxers. Your dad's old Dell computer running Windows XP suddenly turns on and your old computer screen displays a message. You wake up and check to see what it's saying. It wants you to play a game you've never heard of before and one that hasn't been released yet. And for the sake of this video, let's just pretend we never see the title screen since the title and room pretty much spoils everything. You start the game, and the first thing you notice is you're playing as this person waking up and suddenly being inside a strange room. Or f*** it, you are the person inside the room. You learn how to move, look around with the mouse, and... What's this? A timer? What's that for? What happens when it reaches zero? I don't know, but notice how you'll see that timer immediately after you get out of bed. A few seconds later, you've met with a mysterious robotic voice. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aid Admission Center. You don't know who this is, and the subtitles don't help, and you know nothing about this voice. After some brief talking, you're informed that the robotic voice is here to guide you through a test. The countdown gets closer to zero, but then the most important part of the video game happens. An orange oval appears, and there you are! You can see yourself. You'll probably keep moving back and forth just to double check. This, I believe, is a great introduction to the player. Even if you've never played a single video game before, with this scene, the player gets it. They get the core concept of the game. Even if you've never looked at the title of the game, and even if you've muted the volume and turned off the subtitles. Next, you'll run into a room, and you know how the human brain goes. Me see big red button, me step on big red button. A door opens, you walk towards it, and it closes. Then a cube suddenly falls down, you learn to pick it up and think to yourself, well, if I can't go past the door without something to press down the big red button, then maybe we can use the cube to press it down. Congratulations, you've completed an introduction level and you've learned all the controls in the game. The rest of the stages further introduce a player to the game with the new game mechanics such as the first portal gun where you can only control the blue portals, the energy pellets, momentum, which isn't actually a mechanic per se, but rather a new way of using the portals by jumping from a high height, gaining a lot of speed, passing through another portal, and then flying across the room. Or in other words, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. Then there's a second version of the portal gun where you now have control over the orange portals, then the turrets, and the companion cube, which isn't too important considering that it only lasts one level. And you all know the rest, you meet that familiar robotic voice in person, defeat her in a boss battle, you fall outside, the credits play, and the end. Now, the first portal game is amazing and fun to play, 
but that game is more like an introduction. Mostly because the game is very short, in fact you're going to spend around 2 hours on your first time playing, not to mention that the game is currently $10, and if you do the math, that's roughly $5 per hour of gameplay. But that is still well worth the $10, and it's better than paying more for another game with 30 hours of horrible gameplay experience that's like trying to make a ragdoll walk in slippery ice. And there's nothing wrong with this game being an introduction, in fact it does a great job being an introduction. Not just because of how quickly you learn the game mechanics, but also because I'm already having a lot of fun. I have this feeling as if Portal is like this break I need from playing all the intense first person shooter games. And while it is fun shooting some zombies, other players, or whatever you're doing in other first person shooter games, Portal takes it a bit slower. This puzzle game gives the player the main objective not to survive, but to, well, solve puzzles. And I've had a lot of fun with the puzzles for the sake of solving puzzles. I've had moments where I became a little frustrated and gave up at one point, but I picked myself up and the moment I finally figured it out makes me go, oh, that makes sense. A problem I see in a lot of other puzzle games or games that include some puzzles come to the point where the puzzles aren't really puzzles. Sometimes the word puzzle becomes a flat out lie when they're so easy that the game is more like, hey, can you do me a favor and press this button right here? Push. On the other hand, if a puzzle is too confusing to the point where you have to look at a walkthrough in order to solve it, and even if you do indeed finish the puzzle on your own, if the players keep having the thought, would anyone really be able to solve this on their own? Then that's just bad game design right there. Did you actually solve the puzzle with some form of critical thinking, or did you just press a bunch of random buttons, move in random places, shoot in random directions, and hope you solved it? Portal has balanced the easy and difficult very well. Unlike most other puzzle games, Portal really gives the player some lateral thinking, and it lets the player go loose. With the exception of the introduction levels, there's no one way to solve any puzzle in Portal. You can shoot a portal here or there, or anywhere if you'd like. When you try knocking down turrets, you can do that by either pushing a turret, picking up a turret, dropping a block on a turret, using another turret to knock down a turret, or any other way that works. The player looks around the room for any kind of clues or hints on how to solve the game, and the game does a good job of letting the player know what something does and where it goes. The energy pellets leave a little mark on where they've bounced off, the energy pellet receiver shines light to hint where the player should use the portal, the red buttons, both big and small, have blue dotted lines to show who and where the button connects to. The game's environment balances its detail well. It's not too simple, like an empty white room, and not too detailed to look like a sea of garbage. The textures on the walls give the impression as if the player is in some old, outdated, and isolated laboratory, while not having too much detail to make the player too distracted or lost. It's very clear to tell where you can and cannot shoot the portals, as that's something you'll find out on your own that you can only shoot at the white or grey walls. Now, Portal is great, but it's not perfect. For first time players, some of the action based mechanics can take some time to get used to. The portal momentum does take some time to master your controls and reaction time, even after replaying the game multiple times. Shooting a portal in some places like the roof can be hard to get just right whether you're trying to jump on another platformer or you're taking down a turret. Yes, there are some X spots where the turrets are, but that's only for some of them in which dropping something from the roof is the only option. Plus, you'll have to be in front of some of the turrets for a few seconds in order to do that. So the only real complaint about the game besides its length everyone said for the millionth time is just getting used to some of the action-based mechanics. It may not be super friendly to slow-paced players, but the game still provides a great puzzle experience for any player with any level of experience. So we've gone through a lot about the first Portal game, but that's just the beginning. Let's fast forward four years later to its sequel, Portal 2. And this game was a real game changer. I'll be focusing only on the single player campaign since I've never really played the cooperation mode before. There are so many improvements to the game. New and great characters were introduced, including Wheatley, Cave Johnson, Carolyn, who's just GLaDOS but human. And last but not least, the Space Core. <laughs> The game is much more atmospheric, with the detailed place looking more abandoned and faded into obscurity, which makes sense because it's been a long ass time since everything happened. The designs of the characters and objects have improved a lot, with the cores, Gladys, and more. And now you know who is who if you turn on the subtitles. The writing in this game formed Gladys and Wheatley as one of the most likable villains ever. Or companions, I don't know, this gets pretty confusing. With all the fun but dark humor presented throughout the game. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. Now this writing part is still true for the first game, which I forgot to mention earlier. Just with GLaDOS alone. All your other friends couldn't come either because you don't have any other friends. 
New and interesting game mechanics are introduced, including the launcher, lasers, gels, and bridges. And last but not least, the game is a lot longer. You'll get about 5-6 to six hours on your first time playing, and that might be short, but keep in mind, you'll be switching places all the time, so it always feels like a never-ending experience. Oh, okay, it looks like the test is almost over, so you should be closer to the end, right? Nope. While Portal 2 has changed, it still kept the same great things from the first game. A lot, actually. You literally go through the same exact tutorial sequence as the first game with the portals opening and the red button thing. So you get a nice little refresh, and even if you've never played the first game, you still get the core concept of the game. The first few levels are the same levels you played in the first game, but some of them are redesigned to make the player less confused. I'm glad the first level you encounter has button placements instead of a portal timer, which is really just confusing. I do wish this was the first level Valve used for the first game. Portal 2 kept the same simple white walls to let you know, hey, here's a spot you can shoot portals at, which is great considering that there is a lot more detail thrown at you compared to the first game, and the white walls really stand out from the dark atmosphere throughout the game. So while I won't go into too much detail about Portal 2 since it's basically Portal 1, but it isn't, both games serve the same core principle of shooting portals and solving puzzles, and the whole idea of shooting portals has impacted the gaming community by a large amount. Also, keep in mind, Valve wasn't the first to develop the whole portal idea. That first came through Nuclear Monkey's 2005 game, Narbacular Drop. It was Portal, but unlike the sci-fi setting that we see from the Portal series, this indie game has a dungeon-based theme with a princess. Yep. Valve saw the game at some Digipen career fair, loved it, and not only took interest in developing the game further, but also hired the entire team to work at Valve. So while Valve wasn't the first to develop the whole Portal idea, they took that idea and made a freaking masterpiece. Both Portal games are regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time, and I couldn't agree more. It's not just the puzzles or the gameplay that make the game so great, but it's all the memorable characters from the game. I really do wish a lot of the other earlier games had some of the same core principles to guide the player well and let the player go loose, but the Portal Legacy passes on, and I hope future game developers learn what's best for the player. So that was my little analysis on the Portal video game series. You guys can probably comment and let me know what you think. What are your thoughts on the Portal video game series? Do you like it or not? Are there any other great puzzle games? And I guess this is the part of the video where I tell you guys to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I really shouldn't be doing this since I don't want to explain it like you guys are stupid or something, but apparently that's what YouTube encourages. Anyways, I'm Joseph R. Carroll. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you soon.